Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make this sort of tyre burnout effect um, using Maya fluids. It's quite a nice effect and it's also really quick to make. So let's jump into Maya. So I've got this scene here that I've already set up and you can see we've got a little bit of animation on this tyre. It sort of spins, sort of burns out a bit and then sets off and goes out of frame. And if you have a look in the outliner, we've got this group which contains all of our tire animation and within the group we've got the tire geometry and this proxy piece of geometry which we created. It matches the circumference of the tire and that's what we're going to emit particles from. So we go to the effects toolkit and go to um, fluids and create a 3D container and just check the little box. We're going to reset the settings to default and in the X size we're going to put it to 30 and we're just going to match that in the Y and Z value and untick add emitter and click apply and close and we're just going to move this um, container up to the center of the tire so it matches the floor plane and straight away we're going to change the base resolution to 25 and this is basically um, a master quality switch for the uh, simulation um, you want to keep it quite low like 25 whilst you're setting the simulation up so we need to select the fluid and then our proxy cylinder and go to fluids and we need to go to add edit components and emit from object and now if we hit play you'll see we're getting this emission from our proxy geometry um, but it doesn't look quite right just yet so it's obviously getting cut off by the bounding box so what we need to do is go into the uh, fluid uh, shape and go down to auto resize and we need to auto resize this and values that I found are good for this auto resize threshold um, I'm going to chop this one in half so it'll be 0 0.005 and the auto resize margin I'm going to put this to 12 and this is basically just going to create sort of a shoulder of um, 12 grid spaces um, between the edge of the simulation and the bounding box just so nothing is getting cut off this auto resize margin um, adds a lot of simulation time like I think the simulation time just basically doubled from putting it to 12 but there's nothing you can do if you have it lower I found that um, the particles sort of get cut off especially when you're rendering with Arnold so I'm gonna go down to the content details and under density um, I'll just leave the density scale at 0 0.5 um, I'm gonna affect this dissipation and this is basically how fast the smoke disappears so if I just put this to 1 um, that's gonna make the smoke disappear a bit faster and with the buoyancy I'm gonna give it a negative value because if you imagine burning rubber is quite a dense sort of smoke it's not gonna rise as quickly as sort of um, burning paper or something like that um, it'd be quite thick dense smoke so I'm giving it a negative buoyancy value um, under velocity I'm just gonna increase this swirl value and that's just basically um, giving the particles sort of a tendency to form like sort of swirls sort of swirling patterns so I'm quite happy with the look of this so far um, we obviously have a problem with it sort of penetrating through the floor surface um, but we'll take care of that later on um, I'm actually going to change our um, diffusion value. I'm going to put that to 1.5, and that's just going to sort of um, sort of disperse the smoke um, a little bit differently. It's going to sort of create a bit of fall off. Um, so it's all sort of behaving quite well. This is sort of 50% of the way there already. Um, under turbulence, I'm going to change the strength um, to 5. We want quite a turbulent-looking smoke. Um, I'm going to change the frequency to 1, and the speed of that to 0.5. And that's just going to add a little bit of sort of noise into this um, simulation. You can see that sort of taking shape um, around the top. Maybe a little bit too much, but we can fine tune this later on. Um, so I'll leave that as it is. And um, I'm just going to have a look at the shading now. We don't really need to affect the color very much because we're sort of going for a smoky black and white effect. The main thing here is the transparency slider. Uh, it's really important with Arnold. Um, I found to create a really nice looking smoke, 0.08 is um what what looks good with Arnold. I've done a few render tests and I found that to be a good shade of grey for the um transparency. And yet we can leave all of these just as standard because we're just going for a black and white smoke effect. So um under lighting this is gonna change the look drastically. So if we put self shadow on so, and make sure real lights is ticked it's going to sort of take into consideration our HDRI and it's going to scatter those light rays through the simulation. So this is taking shape quite a lot. Um, obviously, the turbulence is a bit too high. You can see what effect that's had. Um, I think I'm going to go back into that now. Actually, it's a good time to fix it. Um, so into, uh, where is it now, uh, contents details. Um, we need to go into our turbulence. And maybe I could half this, or I'll, I'll just set that to two for now. And we'll just see what effect that has. Um, 
obviously it still looks a little bit much, but we're going to add something um, just in, in a minute that's going to change sort of the overall look of this whole thing. So we're just really looking for this turbulence to disturb the particles a bit. And I think we could actually change this buoyancy to be even lower, so I'll put it to um, minus 5. Because if you think about smoke, it's sort of really dense and smoggy, um, especially if it's burning rubber, it's going to be really heavy. So you want it to fall quite fast. And that's looking pretty good, it's definitely taking shape. So the next thing we're going to do is add in a volume axis to sort of shoot the smoke backwards, because at the moment it sort of stays where it is. So if we just select our fluid shape in the outliner and go to um, fields and solvers and create a volume axis. In fact, I'll just undo that because we want to go into the options, go into the volume axis options and just give it a relevant name. I will call it volume axis, I think. Yep. Um, I'll change the magnitude to, uh, let's say 50, and uh, I'm going to change the shape to a cylinder. And I'm just going to go down and I'm going to change this along axis value um, to 2. And that's going to sort of shoot the particles out. So it's, if you imagine it like a sort of a vacuum cleaner, it's just sort of hoovering up the particles and shooting them back out in the direction that you choose. And you can see the arrow shows you the direction it's going to shoot them in. So I'll just put this near the base of the tire because that's really where the smoke's going to be sort of shot out from on a real tire. Um, so if we hit play now, we can see what effect this is having. You can see that the volume axis is sucking in those particles and shooting them out behind. And it's all starting to take shape. That's sort of looking a lot like I would expect it to look like. And now I think is a good time to take care of this sort of um, issue where it's going through the ground plane. So I select the fluid um, shape and then shift select our ground plane. We can go to um, our, where is it? It's in fluids uh, and then we need to click make collide and as simple as that we've added in the ground plane now the um, the fluids are going to interact with the ground plane they're not going to go through it anymore perfect and I think we could actually increase those shadows inside a little bit they, we could make them much more pronounced so I'm just going to stop the simulation here um, I'll open up the IPR window just so we can see what it's looking like at the moment and it's looking pretty good, it's rendering perfectly with Arnold. Arnold works so well with these things, it's so well integrated with Maya at the moment. So I'm going to go into the fluids and sort out the shadows, go down to lighting and change the shadow opacity. Uh, just put that at 1, and that's going to really darken up those shadows, create a lot more depth in, in this uh, simulation. And if you wanted to fine tweak the Arnold system, you can go down to the Arnold tab within the fluid shape, and you can get plenty of options here. Um, by default, they're all pretty much set up how you would want them at the moment. Um, you can also tweak um, how this volume is going to react with the light. So if I'm going to select my Skydome light with my HDRI in it and um, just make sure that um, effect volumetrics is ticked and you can increase the volume samples and that's going to reduce some of the noise inside of the fluid sim. So that's basically all there is. Now, once we've sort of happy with the simulation, we can up that base resolution that I showed you earlier. So to do that, I'll just go back into the fluids, go right up to the top, and um, you'll see this base resolution. And I'll put it to something like 75, so just triple the resolution. And um, I'll just hit play now, and you'll see it is simulating much slower, but it wouldn't really affect the render time too much. You're talking a couple of extra seconds, and it's just going to become much less jagged. You're not going to see the voxels anymore. Obviously, there are much more parameters that you can tweak to sort of fine-tune your simulation and get it looking exactly how you want. I've just shown you the basics. But yeah, there it is. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more 3D tips. Cheers.